Roby Hastings, the two prominent figures in the organization, Here Comes the Sun. Now, we don't have the Beatles, obviously, with us, but we do have the two prominent figures um, from this organization, and they are collectors of Beatle items, and they are trying to form an organization throughout the country involving the Beatles. Now, perhaps, Robbie, or Roby, you'd like to tell us why you formed this organization. Well, we mainly formed the organization um, to bring a convention to Canada, a Beatle convention, uh, where you could uh, see Beatle, Beatle films, sell, you know, items like we have here, and just experience Beatlemania again. And uh, are you working on getting this um, convention together right now? Yes, we are. Um, we've uh, progressed quite a bit. We mm -hmm. have only had one general meeting, uh, the people involved, and uh, since that meeting we've come a long way. We've got a hotel now, we've got the city plan, and an approximate date. Okay. Uh, Debbie, um, you're awfully young, I believe only 14 mm -hmm. years old. Fifteen. To be experiencing Beatlemania, it seems like it's a bit behind the time. Why is it that you're experiencing this now? Oh, uh, it's it's just something that happens. I don't know. It's it's very unexplainable. I, it's just happening. It's uh, it's like it's going all over the country now. Everybody like people like me are just getting into them. Now I don't know why it's just happening. <laughs> so you just started listening to the Beatles in the past few years, and you've just mm -hmm. begun to like them. I love them. <laughs> uh, how do you get people together that uh, have that common interest then? Well, I. I I, I really feel that um, uh, they just come together. It, it's it, it's funny, um, word of mouth, you know, just mm -hmm. you know, people. Friends. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, um, there there is a lot of mm -hmm, advertisement, uh, advertising, you know, things going on down in the states. Yeah. And. Um, I understand they have magazines down there too, eh? Yes, and they do. Uh, fan magazines. Do you be inventing your own as well, won't you? Yeah, we hope to um, start production on our, uh, our own magazine for, for Canadian Beatle fans uh, very shortly, before the summer. Are there any now in Canada? No, they're not. No. What would you call this magazine? Here Comes the Sun. Yeah, that's appropriately named. That's, right. that's the name of your organization? Yeah. That's right correct. Yeah. yeah. And we have all this stuff in front of us. When was it that you decided to start your collection, Ruby? Well, I've been collecting ever since I was 10. That's when I first <laughs> saw the Beatles. And, uh, and of course, <clears throat> I, haven't, I, I restarted, I guess, in, in the late 60s. And uh, so far, I've come a long way. <laughs> to, Which are your most prized possessions? These little fellows right here. And so. how did you get those? Uh, through a friend who found them in the States and sold them to me. With getting back to the organization, Here Comes the Sun, within this organization, do you all have individual jobs that you get done? Yeah. How does that work? What are your positions within the organization? Well, like he's head of the magazine, and then I'm working, like, I have to work to find the, the backers because I found them at first. So I have to work to make sure that they're, what they're going to do, and then I'm it's kind of like a secretary, I don't know, except for I don't want to call myself a secretary. <laughs> Liberation. First, yeah. <laughs> Personal assistant, I think that's what I call it. He's head of the uh, magazine, and then the guy in Montreal is head of, like, head of the whole thing. So you do have contacts throughout Canada, then, do you? Well, mainly in the East, for a time. What kind of things are going to be in your magazine? Well, we'll have um, up-to-date articles on what the Beatles are doing now. Um, maybe some nostalgia type articles, and we'll have drawings mm -hmm. uh, of, of the Beatles photographs, and just, you know, yeah. the Beatles fan club. Makes How are you going to find out what the Beatles are up to now? Do you have someone you can contact in the States? Yes, or? Uh, well, this fellow mm -hmm. um, in Montreal does have a contact with um, a big Beatle dealer down in the, down the States, and He's got uh, his own magazine. We, we hope to get some articles and uh, news from him. Mm -hmm. Getting back to these um, souvenirs, I guess you could call them of the Beatles, um, do you have, or are you looking for any souvenirs which you haven't got? Yes, I am. There are scads of uh, Beatle collectibles still available that I don't have, and I'm always looking. 
You notice they make practically everything, like we have a wig here. <laughs> now, those were popular back in the Early 60s, 64. Yeah. Uh, oh, Do people wigs. wear them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never wore mine. <laughs> But as you can see, there's lunch pails and dolls of all sorts, and, and books and magazines, guitars, uh, okay. even a game down there. And painting? Paint by numbers, is it? Paint by numbers, too, sure. Which of the Beatles is your favorite? John Lennon. Is he everybody's favorite or just yours? Well, I feel I, every, everyone that I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot of Beatles fans, um, they, they all seem to like John the most. He's yeah. the most down to earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have met more John Lennon fans than any other fan of any other Beatles. But when the group was together, was he? He wasn't. The highlight really wasn't on him. It was more on Paul McCartney, was it not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now that the group has broken up, I guess they see John Lennon as the the main one now. No, I I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's kind of hard. I I I just feel that um, he was the most down to earth fellow. You know, the guy that you could come up to the street and you know, um, if he was on the street, you could talk to him. Whereas Paul McCartney seems to be, well, I mean, I like him, yeah. but I feel he's probably a little bit higher. A little bit yeah. higher still, yeah. <clears throat> uh, in this convention, then, that you're trying to plan, are you going to try and get people from all over Canada? Or how, how large do you hope it will be? Oh, I have no idea. I have no mm. idea. Mm -hmm. We will be advertising, but we expect a lot of people to come from the States, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also talk of the Beatles getting back together again. Now, what do you think of the possibilities of this? Wow. Well, I don't know. It's just too hard to say. Yeah, yeah, it's not up to us. And, and uh, I, I would like to see them get back you know, in the recording studio again. I don't know about... Uh, a show? Concert? Well, e even a concert. I, I don't know if they'd, if they'd really like to get back together as a group again because they've gone past that. Now they're working as individuals and they're all successful at that too. Yeah. Um, do you notice any change in their personalities now that they've split up that you can see? Uh, well, John's um, come more into his own. Like, now he's kind of mellowed out from the... His first to the beginning, he was really fun, and then he became all political, and now he's kind of mellowed out of it. Mm -hmm. And has the change, you know, been for the better then with all of them, do you think? He's just matured. I think they've all mm -hmm. matured. You know, they mm -hmm. were young back then, and... Maybe it wouldn't work then if they got back together. It would be different. Certainly would be different, yeah. but I'd like to hear them get back together. Do you think that the Beatles' um, popularity will always remain high? Like, it, it doesn't really seem to have ever hit a low. Like, they're always playing the Beatles on the radio. They're sort of yeah, a classic. Right. <sighs> it's, you know, time will tell, but I, I believe that, you know, like, you still Probably. talk about Beethoven. You know, right. still be talking yeah. about the Beatles in the year 21,000, 2100. Is it because of their lyrics, or uh, what is it? Just, um, um, what do you think, Debbie? Yeah, yeah. I think it's them. Um, they've got a magnetism or something, I don't know what you want to call it. It was magic. The music, yeah, magic, yeah. The music and them put together is something. <laughs> Beatlemania. Yeah. That's what they called back in 64, and that's what they call it now, Beatlemania. Mm -hmm. But it isn't... Um, like you couldn't compare it with the Bay City Roller mania by any. I hope not. By any. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. So there was a far greater intelligence with oh, the yeah. Beatle mania. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's always good to know. Well, I think their lyrics had, you know, more. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. Than the Bay City. Roller. <laughs> I should hope so. Uh, the Beatles' music also went through different stages, did it not? Like when they first started off, it was very simple and just sort of love songs, and then it went through a gradual change. Could you perhaps explain this? Well, again, they were maturing. They uh, they were also maturing in the uh, uh, in the recording studios. The recording studios became more advanced, and they had to they opened up the uh, the doors to a lot of different ideas, and uh, they just grew up. Um, I, I was talking to you earlier, and you mentioned that your favorite song by the Beatles was Paperback Writer. Um, I believe John Lennon wrote a book. Does this have um, any parallel with the song that he wrote, Paperback Writer? No. No? No, I don't think so, no. Nothing. That you know of? Maybe you've heard something I remember. No. Well, then this um, convention that you're planning on getting together, how long do you think it'll be before you can get 
everything organized? Well, of late, uh, we've been planning on having, well, we, we were thinking of, of having it next year. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, well, it's kind of soon, maybe not until 79. But now, again, we, we, the way things are going, uh, they're going along, running smoothly. We think 78 is a good year. Mm -hmm. How about sponsors for this convention? Well, I'm working on some people from the Bats Breweries who are girl in Toronto contacted them to ask if they'd like to sponsor and uh, they said they would do all they could to help but I'm not sure like how much money they're going to be able to put up because it's going to cost a lot of money. So I have to talk to them about it, like write them a letter and see exactly what they're going to be able to put up and why. And <laughs> we are still looking for more sponsors. That's, that is one problem. Money is always a problem. Yeah. And if there's anyone interested in sponsoring uh, this convention, I'll just give out Roby's number now. It's 521-0609. That's his home phone telephone number. And at work, you can contact him at 238-6311. Are you getting ideas from the states and from the conventions they've had? Oh, yes. It, it will be a parallel to the ones they've had in the states. They, yeah. uh, they are great. The, I've never been to one myself, and mm -hmm. Debbie and I hope to get one. Yeah. Get to one in Boston in uh, later on this year, just to see what they're like. Yeah. You know, we're planning one. We haven't even been to one. <laughs> do you swap uh, souvenirs, or what do you do at these? At, at the conventions, they, <clears throat> they usually have film rooms where uh, they screen all the films that uh, the Beatles made, and also promo films and other films. Uh, dealer rooms where they sell Beatle collectibles, such as I have here and listening rooms where they have um, taped interviews. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there are also um, art rooms where people display their own artwork. You know? Great. They have contests. And, you know, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight, Debbie and Roby. But hopefully we'll be able to have you um, back again closer to the convention. I'll let you know. Good luck with it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>